Hello, this is Don of Dee's Hard Trees, and we're on an arbor quest to see the original cone pine tree in the Pinon National Forest. And I'm here with John, and he's going to explain the uh, an introductory to the bristlecone pine tree. Thanks. Go ahead, John. The, uh, the bristlecone pines, as we know, are the oldest trees in the world. They uh, grow here in the White Mountains. Uh, this is a very high altitude environment. They grow at, starting at about 9,500 feet. Uh, they grow up to about 11,500 feet. Uh, they have a very short growing season, 60 to 75 days perhaps. Um, they're a very hardy tree. They'd have to be to survive this environment here. Perhaps the key to their survival is their ability to adapt to a very dry, cold environment. They can lose portions of their bark, and of course the, the, uh, the cambium layer underneath that dies. But a tree can live for hundreds and hundreds of years with a small strip of bark protecting an inner cambium layer that provides nutrients to the needles uh, further on up the tree, nutrients and water. So they're very adaptable. Uh, there's no insects to speak of up in here that are killing these trees. Uh, it's a very inhospitable environment for insects. As I said, it's very cold and dry. Um, fire is not a threat here. You can see the bristlecone forest itself is, uh, has very little vegetation in terms of ground vegetation. The trees are scattered far apart, so consequently uh, they don't carry fire. You know, we do get lightning strikes every once in a while that will start a tree on fire, but uh, we don't get big crown fires sweeping through the forest here. The trees are just too spread apart and there's, there's very little ground vegetation to actually carry a fire. So there really is very little to, to kill the trees up here. Um, some of these trees uh, are three and four thousand years old. Um, we can tell the age of a tree by a device we call an increment borer, which is screws into the tree and it takes a small little cross section out of the tree and we actually can count the tree rings. Scientists have counted back uh, over four thousand years on many of the trees that are here. There's about twenty of the trees that are over four thousand years old. Then they can also line up those increment or those tree ring patterns with dead wood on the ground to get an even longer pattern. And currently, the, the long continuous pattern that we have here is 8,500 years. Then there's a little break, and then there's another 3,000 year pattern that um, provides nearly a continuous 11,500 year pattern, which takes us back almost to the end of the last ice age here in the White Mountains. So, from that standpoint, Trees, the old trees that you see here uh, are really just probably two or three generations removed from the trees that recolonized here after the Ice Age. They grew very slow, but they also grew very long. These trees aren't particularly threatened. They all live on public land up here. I mean, it's illegal to cut the trees down, it's illegal to take wood, so they're very well protected. In fact, where they grow in most places in the western United States, they're on either national forest land or in national parks or on Bureau of Land Management land. So in that sense, they're pretty well protected. Um, what may threaten them in the long run is as temperatures warm, this environment here becomes a little bit more hospitable for disease and insects. And uh, that may begin to play a role here that we haven't seen in the past. So we'll have to see. That may be a little bit down the line. But uh, clearly the growing season here is beginning to lengthen out and get longer. Um, these trees are moving up in elevation, up you can go up to the highest altitude and uh, see a lot of young seedlings up there. So in, in summary, these trees are very old, they're very rugged, but they also provide an incredible um, scientific look into climates of the past. By looking at the tree rings, we can tell if things have been wetter or drier in the past. And uh, there certainly is plenty of evidence that there's been some droughts uh, that have been recorded in the tree rings that have been 
pretty long, severe droughts, 30 and 40 year droughts that uh, have been very dry. So uh, we haven't seen that in uh, the last number of years here. And, and who knows, the, temp the climate seems to be changing. But uh, these tree rings tell us a lot of things about past climates and especially precipitation patterns. Um, John, I just have two questions for you. One is uh, uh, the root structure on these trees and how they develop and what the roots have to deal with, uh, soil, and also how they get their water and how the elevation of the roots on, on the level of soil where they live mm -hmm. and, uh, and how that sustains the tree through, these, uh, in, through the environment. That's the first question. The other question, if you can just date basically the oldest tree out here as best to your knowledge. Well, the oldest tree we have here is what's been called the Methuselah tree. It's 4,780 years old, and it's, down, it's two miles down the trail in the Methuselah trail loop. It's not marked, however, so you won't know which one it is. It's for its own protection. Um, in terms of the root structure, these trees have a lot of lateral roots. In other words, they spread wide roots out. They don't have a big, deep tap root because it wouldn't do them any good here. The water table is who knows where it is here it's way down so they need to spread their root systems out far and wide but they're relatively shallow that allows them to get the moisture in just the top part of the soil that we have here uh, they grow uh, quite a bit on this white dolomite soil that you see here at Shulman Grove and it's not so much because they favor the soil here it's because that white dolomite is very alkaline and very little else can grow on it so consequently um, they can grow almost in a competition-free environment. Well, thanks, John, very you much for uh, Glad you could come up for us. your visit. And uh, so we're in the introductory part. We will take a walk through, a trek through the uh, forest here. Our arbor quest will lead uh, through the Methuselah Trail. Is that what it's called? That's one of them. Yeah. And we'll... We'll uh, just basically talk about the trees as we come to them, and so we got to go.